Welcome back everyone. In this example, we are asked to find the volume of the solid obtained by rotating the region bounded by y equals x minus x squared and y equals zero about the line x equals two. And so as the title up there suggests, we're gonna find this volume using the cylindrical shell method. So let's go ahead and start our process like we usually do by visualizing our region, thinking about rotating our region around our axis of rotation, and then visualizing what that solid object is gonna look like. And so our region is bounded by x minus x squared. That's gonna be a concave down parabola with an x-intercept at x equals zero and x equals positive one. So it's gonna look something like this. And then our lower bounding curve is y equals zero. So it's just that region below our parabola and above our x-axis. And now our axis of rotation is the line x equals two. And remember, if x is equal to a constant, that gives us a vertical line. And so now we are going to be rotating our little parabolic region around this line, x equals two, and that's going to create our solid of revolution. So we kind of get a little symmetric bump over here, not drawn perfectly to scale. We just need a rough sketch to help us set everything up. And so this would be a pretty weird looking solid. I don't think my picture uh, gives a very good representation of it in three dimensions, but it'd basically be like a kind of ring that we would create, right? A ring with a flat bottom and then a curved parabolic top. And so the title up there kind of gives it away that we're gonna use our shell method to find this volume. But if we didn't have that kind of hint for us, well, we might think about looking at a cross section, either perpendicular or vertical. And well, if our axis of, ro of rotation is vertical, like we have here for x equals two, if we we're trying to use the disc or washer method, we'd use a perpendicular or horizontal slice or cross section. And well, we would see that with that horizontal slice, we'd run into an issue of having to describe the outer and inner radius as a function of y, which would require us to solve x minus x squared equals y for x in terms of y. Again, that can be done using the quadratic formula. It'll get messy and be much more difficult to do than if we were just to use something like the shell method. So we might initially try to use the disc or washer method, but hopefully we should be able to convince ourselves that that is not the way to go. Instead, let's now try the shell approach. So remember with our shell method, we think about taking a rectangle or a slice that is parallel to our axis of rotation. X equals two is vertical. So we're gonna look at a vertical slice or a vertical approximating rectangle here. So now we're going to rotate that approximating rectangle around the axis of rotation at x equals two. It should intercept the mirror image of our region over here right about there. And here we have just one of our green cylindrical shells. And so now that we have a rough sketch of our region and our three-dimensional solid object, we can start piecing together the formula and pieces we need for our cylindrical shell approach. Remember the general formula for just one of our single cylindrical shells is two pi times the radius times the height times delta r or the change in the radius. So the first thing I always find is the delta r, the thickness or the change in our radius here. And well, here we can see the thickness of our shell is gonna come from the thickness of our rectangle, it always does. And that's gonna be some small change in horizontal values or some small change in X values. So delta R in this setup is gonna be delta X. That tells us everything has to be written as a function of X from here on out. So let's just keep working from right to left. The next piece we need to find for our cylindrical shell is the height of each of our cylindrical shell. Well, the height of our cylindrical shell is gonna to correspond to the height of our approximating rectangle. That'll change as X changes and as we move throughout our original region. But each of those heights of our shells is gonna be given by the Y value for our top curve here. But we need to write that Y value as a function of X. And we know that that Y value is given by X minus X squared. I'm gonna put that in parentheses to remind us that we need those parentheses when we substitute it into our general formula up there. 
Otherwise, you might make some kind of distribution error. And so now the last piece we need to find, and this is the trickiest one here, is the radius. And I say this in all the examples I explain this for, but this is where it becomes really, really important. We have to think of the radius not just as like x or y, as it tends to be in some of our more simple examples. We have to think of the radius as the distance from our shell or from our rectangle to our axis of rotation. And so here is where our rectangle or edge of our shell is going to be. Our axis of rotation is the line x equals 2. So this horizontal distance is representing the radius of our cylindrical shell. And so for some of our earlier examples, when we were rotating around like the y-axis, our radius was just that x value, since x is a horizontal distance. But remember, our x value would get us to right here. And if we use just x, that would say that really this little horizontal distance would be our radius, but that's definitely not right. So what we have to remember is that the radius is the distance from our axis of rotation to our uh, approximating rectangle. And so how do we find this horizontal distance? Well, it's really just going to be the difference between the horizontal x value that gets us to our axis of rotation and with the horizontal x value that gets us to our region of interest or that approximating rectangle within our region that is generating our shell. Another way to think about that is our radius is going to be the rightmost x value minus the leftmost x value, but at least one of these x values is going to be changing as x does and as we move throughout our region of interest. So the rightmost x value is going to be given by that x value corresponding to our axis of rotation. And our leftmost x value is going to be the x value that corresponds to the one for our approximating rectangle. But the x value that gets us to our approximating rectangle is just x itself. So now our radius is a little bit more complicated here. It's going to be 2 minus x instead of just like x as we saw in some previous examples. And so really the only time we end up with our radius as just x or y is if our axis of rotation is the y-axis, in which case our radius would just be x. If our axis of rotation is the x-axis, then our radius would just be y. But when we're rotating around these non-x or y axes, we're always going to get a slightly more complicated expression for the radius. And it's always helpful to find those expressions by thinking of well, is it a, a difference between a rightmost x value and a leftmost x value, or a top y value and a bottom y value? With that, you can then kind of find that rightmost x value for each of your approximating shells and subtract away from that the leftmost x value for each of your approximating shells. Right, if we were to draw a second little approximating rectangle that would generate a second cylindrical shell, do it in pink this time, maybe it'll look something like this. We can see that our radius now is, again, always the distance from your axis of rotation to the edge of your shell, or maybe the middle of your shell. We're thinking these shells is infinitely thin, so that's not a, a point we want to stick on. Well, that rightmost x value, the largest x value, is still 2. But that leftmost x value is changing. It's going to be whatever x value we are at as we move throughout our interval from 0 to 1 that we use to describe our region. So now we found the three components that we need for our cylindrical shell method. So now we're ready to set up our definite integral that's going to represent the volume of our solid of revolution. And so our limits of integration are just going to be the x values we run through in our original region before we rotate it. And so that'll go from x equals 0 to x equals 1. We have to have our integrand be this product of 2 pi times the radius. But our radius is the expression or the quantity in parentheses 2 minus x. We have to multiply that by the height of each of our approximating rectangles or the height of our cylindrical shells, which is given by the quantity in parentheses x minus x squared. Then we have to multiply that by the thickness, which is delta x. When we get to the integral part and take the limit, the delta x turns into the differential of x. So this definite integral represents the exact volume of our solid region. Now we just have to evaluate it. And so I'd pull out that common factor of 2 pi here and then expand these factors. So 2 minus x times x minus x squared is going to give us, let's see, 2x 
minus 2x squared minus x squared plus x cubed. So that'll give us 2x minus 3x squared plus x cubed after we expand it out and combine like terms. Well, now we're ready to find an antiderivative. The antiderivative of 2x is x squared. The antiderivative of negative 3x squared is negative x cubed. And the antiderivative of x cubed is 1 fourth x to the fourth. But well, we have to evaluate this at one and at zero and take the difference. And when we evaluate at zero, we aren't gonna get anything that contributes. So we just end up with two pi times, well, one minus one is zero plus one fourth. So two pi times one fourth, which simplifies to exactly pi over two. And so now we have found the exact volume of our solid of revolution. This solid has an exact volume of pi over two cubic units whatever the units are, they weren't given to us. And the whole point of this example was to see how our approach is gonna change slightly when our axis of rotation is something other than the x or the y axis. We just have to be a little bit more careful when we find that expression for the radius for our cylindrical shells.